up here today on Saturday. Uh, they've been hauling a few loads here a day, pretty steady. Uh, four or five loads a day here the last week or so. It's been kind of hit and miss here, the, the wet pulp. But yeah, a couple more loads today. So I'm loading one on that pile there. We're gonna push that load up the, on that pile, close it off, and we're gonna start a new one here with this, uh, this load. Everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've uh, just been watching here recently, my name is Pete. I'm a dairy farmer in North Dakota. Just uh, showing you guys some of the things that go on on our farm. I try to release a video every Wednesday. And if you guys have any uh, questions, I sure like to answer them in the comments. And if there's any questions I feel like need a longer explanation, I'll make a video on Sunday. So this week we've been uh, stockpiling some beet pulp, some dry beet pulp, and some wet pressed pulp. They uh, they just dropped a couple loads off for us here. A couple of the trucks are just leaving there. So at the, I did some filming of uh, my dad was pushing up the pile here yesterday, and then I got in the skid steer and kind of finished the load the load off yesterday. So it's uh, Saturday here today. They just brought a couple loads. So we're gonna finish pushing this this uh, load on this pile here and then close this one up and then start another pile here right next to it we'd like to keep the piles a little bit smaller just because it's this uh, wet pulp's not very easy to to uh, pack and in the pile it kind of squishes out we happen to be able to get a few loads of dry pulp also I'll uh, and then, yeah we've been kind of mixing it in here together which has been making it a lot easier to push up and pack I'll, I'll get out here quick and show you guys up close what the difference is between the wet stuff and the dry stuff. It is a little windy, so I apologize if there's a lot of wind noise. So this, so this is the the wet pulp, and basically what it is is, uh, at least as far as I know, they they wash the beets, they uh, slice them up, and then they extract the sugar. And then this is what's left afterwards and they try to squeeze some of the moisture out of it and that's what uh, what they call pressed pulp here so this is uh, about 25 percent dry matter so there's quite a bit of water in this so what they also do is uh, they'll dry down this pulp which is this right here and they call that shreds i think basically the same product just dried down Normally what they do is they uh, they dry it down and try to make pellets out of it and then they'll either uh, load it on the train or haul it out with trucks. But if the pellet machine is broken or the pellet machine can't keep up, they'll sell it just as is. And it's not available all the time, but we've been able to get a few loads here. I think we have about uh, 15 loads of wet pulp in this pile and about six loads of dry. And it's, yeah, it's been mixing up here pretty good and it's allowing us to pack it pretty good or better than if it was just wet, I guess. It, uh, bee pulp, we like feeding bee pulp and we thought uh, close to the end of the, the beet processing season here, we thought we'd see if we could get a bunch of loads together to stockpile some and we'll feed some. Uh, they usually go until uh, April, sometimes into the beginning of May when they quit harvest or quit processing beets so there won't be any beet pulp available after that then we'll probably feed these a uh, couple piles up that we'll try to get two or three piles made here smaller piles so we can feed through them a little bit quicker once the, the temperatures warm up so we don't have a bunch of spoilage but I, I thought I'd show you guys that uh, here today it sounds like uh, we're gonna have a few more loads of dry pulp here coming next week and Hopefully we can get some more wet pulp. It's been at the beginning of the season when they start uh, processing in September, end of August. The wet pulp seems to be uh, pretty easy to get or a lot more reliable. But once we get a little bit further in the, the processing season, now we're in the uh, end of March, it's kind of hit or miss. The, the nice thing is uh, uh, 
in the eastern part of North Dakota, western part of Minnesota, there's uh, quite a few beet plants. So they've been uh, they've been hauling out of uh, three or four different plants wherever it's available, and they try to get us uh, as many loads as as we can here now to stockpile. But they also haul uh, a load in about every three days, and they dump that by our feed feeding area. You've seen that before in the feeding video, and they've uh, they've been able to keep us. Uh, supplied with pulp there so we could, we've been able to feed that consistently. Beet pulp is a nice feed, uh, the cows really like it. Uh, I had to, uh, one of you guys mentioned in the comments in a previous video that it, that you uh, you store it in egg bags and I think that's a, that's probably a pretty good way to store it. it. The wet pulp is it's hard to pack because it's so wet it just kind of squeezes out you can just sink into it. So an egg bag probably would be a good way to, to store the pulp, be something to try for us in the future. We've never done bags here before, so we don't have a bagger ourselves. I think we could probably rent one. But I'll, uh, I'll get to pushing up this pile, and then if we uh, cover it up tonight or tomorrow, I'll uh, try to film that if I can. And then hopefully we get some more loads here next week and make another pile here to the east of this one. We'll, uh, yeah try to get a few more piles before the temperatures really warm up because then it'll start spoiling right away if we don't get it uh, if we don't get loads in fast enough and don't get it covered fast enough but we'll uh, we'll get going here and then yeah we'll we'll uh, catch you at the end of the video
out for the rest of that pile tomorrow here because it's uh, 5.30 almost already and the guys have to start feeding the calves and cleaning the alleys in the heifer barn. I, uh, I'd like to show you guys how, how they bring that dry pulp because they bring that in a different trailer. That's on a, what they call a walking floor trailer. That's uh, kind of interesting to see, I guess, if you've never seen it. So I think Saturday today, they're I think they're planning to bring in a, a couple loads of dry pulp on Monday. That's a different trucking company that's bringing that. So I'll uh, yeah, if, if I catch them, I'll try to get a video of that. Uh, otherwise, that'll probably be it for today's video. It's um, Monday afternoon here. He brought a load of dry pulp this morning, and uh, now he's back with his second load. Uh, the way this this trailer basically works is the the floor on it moves back and forth so there's uh, several sections on the floor that move I'll uh, if I get the chance I'll show you once he's empty here how it works we've pretty much been getting uh, about two loads of this a day here we got yeah six loads last week he's uh, bringing a couple loads today it sounds like maybe a couple loads tomorrow and we're kind of layering that in here with that wet pulp like I was showing you guys before well, uh, once this trailer is close to empty, I'll jump out and show you guys how that the floor of that trailer works to push that pulp out of there. dusty there by the trailer but they you saw how that works so it, uh, those uh, pieces of floor they move forward you know in thirds so one third at a time moves forward then the second third and the third third and then all three of them move back together moving the product so the idea is whatever you have in there with just one third of that floor moving to the front it doesn't move the product to the front but then when all three of them are moving back the, all of it moves back so it's kind of interesting that'll be it for this video we uh, we finished covering the first pile that we started and just as I finished uh, piling up that uh, dry load that they brought uh, they brought in a wet load so we put that over top sounds like they'll uh, bring another couple loads of dry tomorrow we'll see if they have any wet available hopefully they do We're, the plan is to try to stockpile uh, enough to get us through to uh, next harvest which usually starts around the end of August beginning of September we'll keep piling in as long as we can get uh, get it in steady enough to keep it from molding and we've got some cold temperatures here the next uh, couple weeks still looks like so should still be a good opportunity to, good opportunity to keep piling this uh, beet bulb but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and we'll uh, see you in the next one thanks for watching hey Ramsey